screen on this one. Let's go to this one. Uh, has everybody seen, gone to our website and seen the coronavirus relief measures? Can you guys see this? Oh. No, there it goes. Yeah, we got it now. There we go. Um, this is on our page. I'm going to have to move this. Shoot. I'll move it over here because I can't see it on the right. Um, it's on our policy owner resource page. And it just talks about how effective uh, until June 1st. And that's just the current date. Um, it may extend, you know, we're not sure what's going to happen over the next couple months. Um, but we are extending uh, the normal 30 day premium grace to allow people to, um, who are in a position where they can't make their premiums, we're not going to cancel them uh, for the next month, a couple months at least. And so anybody who's in that position, if you see anyone on your endangered list who is there and may not, you may want to just contact them and let them know that the relief measure is in place. We're not going to cancel their plan. And then when the term ends, you can have a discussion with them and you can do a reinstatement by redate or if they're in a position to make up the premiums that they missed, they can just pay those and continue on. Uh, does anybody not know what a reinstatement by redate is? Let's say yes, no, but there's people that don't know that. Steve, explain it. Okay. Two ways to reinstate. One is your standard reinstatement where you make up all the payments you missed and then you start paying again and, and you're good. The other one is a reinstatement by redate. You can do it twice during the life of a policy. Um, and I don't know that we're going to count this as one of those because of the extenuating circumstances. But what it does is it moves the start date of the contract forward for the number of months that you missed so that you're just starting to make your payments again. So if I missed the last three months because I was out of work and I didn't, um, and, you know, because of the crisis, then we would take and move their start date forward three months. In most cases, it's not going to have an impact, but say you're in a case where moving it forward the three months changes uh, the birthday. So the premiums might change over the policy. So they would owe, you know, however much that changes the premium for all press past premiums. Um, and that might make a little difference. If you have one of these cases, call John or call me and we'll walk you through it. But in most cases, they'll just have to start making their premiums again and it'll be like it never happened. Does that make sense to everybody? So just, just, to, just to add on to that just a little bit, um, we, we, we don't see a significant increase in endangered policies right now. But we're only one month into this whole pandemic thing. So I would anticipate that over the next couple of months, you uh, are going to see your number of endangered policies increase. Um, and I could be surprised and maybe it'll just things won't change that much. But if you do see an increase in those endangered policies, I, it's really important that you reach out to those policyholders and explain their options to them. because. I mean, it's kind of one of those things when, when people are in a tough financial situation, they start thinking about, well, what can I live without for a little while? And a lot of times life insurance, whether it's a pre need funeral plan or other type of policy, it's one of the first things to go because uh, they don't see it as important as a car payment or a house payment or a utility payment or whatever. But then, of course, you know, their, their insurability might change and, and their health status might have changed. And there's a lot of things that could impact that decision. So when we uh, when we send you your endangered report, or hopefully you're all going on to homesteaders and taking a look at things, we you know reach out to those policyholders and have a conversation because it's a really cool thing that homesteaders is willing to 
say, hey, you know what? Let's just start making your premiums again. And you do a policy change form, do a little bit of paperwork, make a monthly premium, everything's caught up, you're ready to roll. So not all insurance companies, printing insurance companies even allow that. They they make them have to, have to pay back two, three, four months worth of premium to reinstate their policy. Um, and But families don't know this unless you contact them. So um, as, as you come across these opportunities, just please, uh, if you see these endangered policies kind of creep up on you just a little bit, those are chargebacks. If they happen in the first year, those those are chargebacks, and and uh, which means that money is going to come out of your reserve, or it's going to make your reserve negative. It's not anything anybody wants, but more importantly than that, uh, it obviously the family loses their protection. So um, you've got one that's behind, and it's your first time doing one. Reach out to John. Reach out to Steve. Reach out to one of us. We'd be more than happy. To, and you can just call homesteaders directly as well. And they will also walk you through it. So, um, John, would you uh, show your thing as well? Would you also, uh, I'm sure everybody's got it, but let's make sure everybody's got it. Just really quickly, there's one thing I have to add to that. Yeah, please. Um, for this particular uh, process where we're going to be reinstating with Redate, um, they're not going to be looking at health changes on these. No. Normally, they, they would wow. be looking at the health changes when they do the reinstatement by redate, and so that would disqualify somebody. But if somebody's missing their payments because of the, the crisis that's going on, we're not going to penalize them for that. Excellent. That's great. So in this particular case, you don't have to re-ask the health questions is what you're saying. Right. Right. Okay. That's awesome. That's cool. All right, John, are you ready, man? I'm going to make you the presenter here. Let me pull you up. You know what? Real quick. Is it easy, Steve, for me, you think, to pull up stuff? Is it just like, yeah. okay. If not, I'm going to turn yeah. it to you and I'll talk. gives you control. You're going to have a screen that um, has a share button. Yeah. Oh, okay. So just, you see it's it, not which, like Zoom. Which you should see it now just, uh, Click the screen share button. It says screen. If you click it and turn it green, you should be able to share your screen. iPad screen. Yep. Start broadcast. Allow. Got it. We we see your screen. Okay. Um, I was going to do. Hold on, I was logged in here. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to do the child grandchild writer um, first. Did you guys have particular questions, or do you want me just to go through this entire Q and A? I think just maybe John, just talk about the main talking points, um, and then if anyone has questions, I think most people understand it in general, but maybe the top three or four questions you hear about it. Okay, just just to kind of highlight, this is a free service that Homesteaders offers to all of our policy owners, um, and it, it's a child or grandchild rider for any child from their first birthday up into the day before their 19th birthday, so one through their 18th year. Um, you can add them in the beginning. You can put in 12 different kids, and you must have at least one to start it at the time of application or within 30 days of the initial application. Um, and then you can add and, and drop off if kids age out, et cetera, you can add and drop off as, as time progresses. Um, for obvious reasons, we don't cover the first year of life. And um, a couple of things, they need to be, just no, they need to be living with their, their parent or guardian. They can't be on the street, obviously. Um, this does not cover any stepchildren or grandchildren. It's just biological children or legally adopted. Um, what will happen is if they were to unfortunately lose a child, God forbid, they would receive the benefit that's equal to grandma or grandpa's policy um, with a maximum of five grand. So if they had an $8,000 policy, we'd pay five grand out for the, for the child. Or if they had a $3,500 policy, we would only pay up to $3,500. 
um, or if it's cheaper for the funeral home, whatever the cost is at the funeral home that's below 5,000, uh, we will take care of it. It's a one-time payout per policy. So, so they, if let's say there's only six grandkids and both the grandparents put them on, if you lose one, you can only claim it once and then that rider is gone and then the other five would be covered on the remaining grandparents policy so we only only pay out one time um let me think also the money is paid to the family not to the funeral home yeah right i i, I will give what one common question that I get is if they take advantage of this and use it, does my policy disappear? And that answer is no. But for some reason, that's a that's a common question, both with agents and consumers, that they think if they use it, they're actually using their policy. And that's not the case. This is in addition to uh, what they have. And one word of caution, Steve, jump in if you if you feel like you want to add some stuff. Um, if you're sitting with a family, um, let's say it's West and his wife, and in my warm up and talking to them, I realized all their children are over 19, but none of them have started a family yet. I would not, you can't really mention the writer in that case because they can't add it later. Okay. We're now, only let's 30 say 30 days from issue. Well, well, they have 30 days, yes, as we mentioned before. Yeah. Um, now, if let's say they've got one grandchild and it's only three months old, put put that child on the rider and start it. It wouldn't become into effect until that child was a year, and then that that kid would be covered. But um, you don't want to mention it, and then them call you two years later and say we want to add the rider because they're not allowing that to be done. Yeah, and John, I, I want to add that. Uh, once you've established it, if you have, say, the one grandchild that's underage, and then later on other kids have kids and you end up with five grandchildren, you can always update your list once it exists. So right. if you start it with the one years later, you can add others to it. You can manage your list whenever you want. Yes. And when you, you just do that, you guys, Let's say we have Susie on there and two years later, we've got two more. When we fill the update or add on, you need to include Susie in that one so that it's a complete list when you send it in. Don't assume that she's still covered under the original. Just a couple Is that things, good? Yeah, there's a couple of things that I'll, I'll add. Um, one, I will say this, I'm, a, I'm amazed the number of policies that come through that probably should have the child and grandchild protection rider, and they don't. Um, for whatever reason, and I don't know what it is, you guys, this is a free benefit to your policy to the families that you serve. Why you don't bring this up and, and extend that extra protection when many times they're eligible for it, I, I don't know what, why. If this is such a, such a valuable thing to the family, it's an incredible closing tool. Um, when you do the warm up and you're talking with the family and you're asking them about their children and their grandchildren and you, I mean, you can kind of do the math in your head pretty quick, right? They're in their 60s. They've got kids in their 40s or, you know, maybe in their 20s. They've got grandchildren that are under the age of 18. I can guarantee it. And so it's an incredible closing tool to, you know, have that closing statement of, you know, you know, by you taking care of your plan today, we are also going to protect your grandchildren um, between the ages of one and 18 at no additional cost to you. The other thing that makes this really cool too is that if you have an endangered policy or maybe policy that's canceled uh, or, or a family that has call is calling you to cancel a policy, um, you can use this as a way to save that policy because you can say something like, you know, I just need to remind you that by canceling your insurance policy, you're also effectively canceling that coverage that you have gotten at no cost for your children and grandchildren. I just need to make you aware of that, that, that you're not only canceling your own your policy, you're canceling theirs as well. And for whatever reason, it works. And it makes people reconsider the, 
that they don't want to, maybe they're willing to give up their protection, but they're not willing to give up the protection of their children and grandchildren. So it is a, it's a great closing tool. Once again, it's a great action close to have that form out and to say, well, while I'm working on, you know, putting your cost estimate together or whatever, while I'm working on your paperwork, would you mind uh, completing this and adding the names of your uh, children and grandchildren that are between the ages of one and 18? Um, and so it kind of gives them a little bit to do. There's always that downtime that we're like, oh, there's no conversation doing this paperwork. Sorry, there's this, there's this, you know, 20 or 30 minutes of silence sometimes. This is an awesome homework assignment for them. And then it does cover 12 children slash grandchildren, but that's per policy. So if they've got a big family, the husband's going to put 12 different children and grandchildren on his policy than what the wife is going to put on hers. And they effectively then have two separate benefits to cover those children and grandchildren. So excellent closing tool. There's no reason ever why you shouldn't be filling out this protection when a policyholder has children and grandchildren between the ages of one and 18. It's an incredible. And you guys, you really want to be consistent with this because you don't, you don't want to offer it to one person and then skip the next and then hear about it. Um, you know, you may have sold sisters unbeknownst to you and the ones telling the other that they're covering the grandkids free and the other sister didn't get the opportunity to do that. So you want to make sure you're consistent in your sales and what you're offering. Excellent point. I have a uh, one, if you haven't been doing it, if you haven't been doing it, then you can just let people know it's a new thing you're offering. That way, if that does come up, then you have that. Yeah. Uh, we had another question. Oh, it's Kelly. Um, so it says that the children, because there's there's over three million grandparents raising their grandkids out here, but so like for myself, I didn't adopt. I did um, legal guardianship. So they're kind of considered a foster kid, but they are my grandkids. So are they? Could they be covered? Sure. Yes. yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They, they live with you. Still. That's fine. Okay, um, I want to take one thing I didn't point out. This last question where it says, what are the eligibility requirements? I think we hit most of that, but the third sentence down at the end starts with the child or grandchild cannot have been diagnosed with a terminal illness within the last six months prior to the application. When you think about that, if they were diagnosed with something two years ago, they're okay. And to me, that seemed odd. So when I asked the actuaries, they said basically, if a child um, makes it six months with a with a terminal illness, they're they're going to make it. So that they were comfortable with saying just in the last six months have they been diagnosed. So that's something to keep in mind there. Any other questions about the child and grandchild protection writer? For those who are on the phone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry? I just was asking if there were any additional questions from the from the team on this particular benefit. I had one. Go ahead, Jane. I, I wasn't told that if the policy is less than 500, the value would be what the policy is. So basically, I offered it to everyone, and, and most policies are 5,000 or more, but if it's between 1,000 and 5,000, and they have a grandchild on it, and their policy is 3,000, they get 3,000 versus 5,000, correct? That's correct. Yeah, Okay. the face amount. And that fact brochure that I just had up for, for that, that's, that's covered, I think, in the very first, in the very first. Um, okay, thanks. Very first thing. Yeah, it's covered right there. What okay. it where it explains it. These okay. this particular brochure and, and several others on the Homesteaders Marketing website uh, are are available to you guys at no cost. Um, while some things do cost, there's a lot of things that don't. This this particular one, if you wanted to have have some of these to include in your packets, um, you can just jump online and order those and have them be mailed directly to your firm. And you guys, as of about the first of the year, Homesteaders has made all of our consumer brochures free. 
So if you go on to your market order system, there's a lot of brochures that you can order. I think the max is 50 at a time um, per, per brochure, but you can get your marketing materials for free now. We are no longer charging for stuff like that. Now, obviously, this, this child rider back brochure, that is for you guys as agents. That's not something you would pass out to the consumer. Right. John, uh, David's asking if it covers great grandchildren. I, it does not, but if you want to expand on that. It, it does not. I know, Brody, they've tossed it around, but I've not heard anything else about that. The actuarial numbers uh, preclude us doing that. Okay. So they cover the great the great grandchildren. You just gotta sell the parents something. That's all. Right. I mean, if they're older, like in their 80s, for example, that means they've got kids in their 60s and late 50s. They're perfect pre 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 planning age. Yeah, if they've got if they got if they have grandchildren, they've got two levels below them that are right prime prospects. Yeah. Good. Good point. Anything else on child grandchild writer? It's a great prospecting tool if you're working a senior fair to say, hey, you know, we can also cover your children and grandchildren for free. Um, and that's just an attention getter. So keep that in mind to mention it. I would say too on this, which I, I don't know why I haven't really thought about it, but uh, uh, you know, if you're doing group, group presentations, um, this would be a great slide to have in your group presentations. Just FYI. Yeah. Well, it, and it, you know, it kits their curiosity and, and hopefully will help them to encourage them to sit down with you and get the details. Excellent. Um, if we move on to the cost of protection worksheet, are you guys using this currently? I would say no, John, probably in most cases not. So kind of explain the purpose of it and how it works. Well, I always like to start out um, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me by choking um, a lot of people if you're, you're in their home and their premium is hundred dollars for 60 months for a, I'm making numbers up you guys four thousand dollar funeral as you're backing down the driveway they're going to their calculator and going 100 times 60 I'm paying six thousand for a four thousand dollar funeral and they cancel and we've all had it happen so this cost of protection worksheet is a way for you to cross that bridge and defend it before they do and figure it out on their own. Um, I wish I had one of these that was backfilled um, that I could show you, but um, you're gonna list your funeral price on the left and then it's corresponding face amount, the age and the plan of the person. So those are the numbers that you're dealing with. The premium amount per month, and guys, I'm making figures up, $100 for 60 months is six grand. If I take that six grand and back out today's funeral price of 4,000, that leaves a cost of protection of $2,000. That's what allows homesteaders to cover you for that bump and face amount immediately, obviously, and based on their health. Okay, so that that 2000 number looks big to them. So now I want to reduce it to the ridiculous and I'm going to take that 6000 and I'm and going to divide it by, uh, excuse me, $2,000, the cost of protection and divide that by 60 months, which will give you the cost per month, which is probably $30, $40. Divide that by 30 or 31 days in a month and it'll get it down to a buck or two, depending on the age and all that kind of stuff. So we've reduced it from this additional charge of 2000 down to it's less than a Starbucks a day uh, for you to have this protection. And then the last part I really like, because we can take the future price. So today's funeral price is four grand. If they're 65, their life expectancy is at least 20 years. Inflation rate in the funeral industry, the higher you go, the better this will look. I would do a minimum of five or six percent. West, I would think you'd probably agree with that as far as funeral inflation. Sure. So that's going to give you that 20 years from now, what that funeral would cost their family had they done nothing. 
if I take out the total premium pay to 6,000, I then show them this is how much you're actually saving by doing this ahead of time. Right. And, and just practice this. It flows really easily. And um, if they've got a copy of this, their kids could see it, you know, if they question it later on and go, no, this is where I explained to your, your parents how, how this worked. But we, we got to make them comfortable with it, but knowledgeable of it so that they don't find out and think you, you pulled a fast one on them. Right. Someone's okay. asking about the inflation rate, Aaron, in Santa Fe. You know, it depends what market you're in, but four to six percent is pretty standard. Yeah. That's what I was gonna that's what I was gonna ask because people don't wanna I mean, I've said dollars, how much more it will be in dollars. They're not interested. I have some people that say, give me the percentage for the protection. So what is a safe percentage to give them when they're saying if I do three years, five years, seven, ten, what is the cost of protection percentage wise to my policy? Well, we can give them a wrong number, but the the there's no two percent, three percent, five percent. It's based on the type of policy they get and their age and the amount of the bump. So it's really while growth is always a concern of theirs, they're getting a guarantee from the funeral that they'll never funeral home that they'll never pay any more for the funeral. So the investment concern is kind of um, relaxed for them, if you will. Um, but there's there's not a raw like it's X amount. It, it, it varies by policy and age. Steve, you have so, anything to add there? Yeah, I do. Um... You know, since it varies for every person, you just have to come down and boil down a number for them and theirs if they're if they're going to hold you to a number and then just let them know that number is going to go up as the price goes up. Should you not do this today? Because um, if you run these numbers and they look skeptically at them, then take their amount, compound it out by the uh inflation number for the next 10 years and say hey 10 years from now if you do this you still have 10 years to go and you run those numbers um they're not they're gonna like those numbers even less and it right. really um, reinforces that the sooner this gets done the better it's gonna be for you because the price in 10 years or 20 years uh using that inflation number and you know, don't don't get it wrong. That that five percent, six percent is accurate because that's what the casket companies are going up every year. Um, they were actually uh, ten years ago. That number was even higher for what caskets were going up. You know, with the gas going up in the early two thousands and all those issues. So, you know, that percentage is accurate. And if anyone uses the estimated payment worksheet, that'll map that out for you. And then you can pre-fill some of this just straight off of that form. Right. One 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 thing that I would advise, um, especially for a brand new agent, but maybe I don't know that we've ever even talked about this before. Um, but in the number of firms that I've worked at in the last 20 years, um, if, if you're with a, a firm that's been writing pre-need business for the last 20, 30, 40 years, um, you could probably can't go back much more than 30, but you could go to your your uh to your pre-need filing cabinet and strum through it, pull out a policy uh, that was from 10 years ago and black out the names on it, pull out another policy that was from 20 years ago and black out the names on it, and put that in your, either make a scan so you can show it from your computer or make a give it so you can bring it in, in, in with your binder, whatever process you use. Um, and it's just a really easy way to show to a family, this is what this same, you know, a traditional funeral with this, you know, with the particular casket, you know, and, and you could even write on that one that what, what, what today's price would be for that particular package. And it's evidence. It's not just you throwing out a number. It's not just you saying, you know, it goes up X percent per year. You say, you know, I, I really, you know, it historically can go up, you know, four to six percent or whatever each year. Um, but this is what it's done in the last 10 years and in the last 20 years. And I've actually brought, you know, you know pre need contracts from 10 years ago and 20 years ago to show you. That that's what it's done so so it, you know i mean you can 
instead of just talking, if you want to bring a piece of evidence along with you on those appointments, that was a great tool for me when I was out there selling on a regular basis is I, I would show them that those two separate contracts from 10 years ago and 20 years ago and how much that price has gone up. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not something that you can disagree with. West, I was, I was going to share. Um, so my father passed away 26 years ago there at Myers, and we used. So I went back into pre need file. And what he didn't do a pre need, he just did a, a, a at need field at the time, and it was forty two hundred dollars, and that was a that was for the professional services, the casket, the vault, and a, a solid mahogany uh, casket back then. <coughs> Day that would cost twelve thousand dollars just for that, and I have that little picture on my phone. It's pretty cool to show some. I mean, I don't pull it out very often, but it does. Twenty six years, it's it's gone up twice. <coughs> then. So so it's doubled about every thirteen years. So 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 yeah. So you could actually go and if you don't have pre needs going back that far, you could easily pull an at need going back that far. On that need. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. I also want to add I, this cost of protection worksheet that we'll send it out and I would recommend just doing a couple samples so you understand it. You probably won't go through this worksheet with every family necessarily after the appointment, but just so that like to John's point, you need to tell them first what the cost of protection is so that they're not figuring it out on their own feeling like you're trying to sneak one past them. But where I have seen people use this cost of protection worksheet is when they call and say I just figured out how much I'm paying. I want to cancel you go back out and i've seen people walk through this with them and get them to really understand it and i can think of four or five cancellations that have been saved because of this so um just getting familiar with this and the verbiage it's not an interest rate so back to jane's question we get that a lot we can't give them a percentage it's not a principal loan so there's not an interest rate attached to it it's the cost of protection and your cost of protection is different than your neighbors so just getting familiar with this concept yeah, and, then, and that also gives you a perfect opportunity to uh, discuss the early payoff options as well, which I'll actually let John John describe that. But but in my attempts, there were many times where, where when I would sell them on a monthly payment plan and that would come up and you'd have to go back out and explain it. Um, and I always try to do a good job explaining you're going to pay. There's, a, there's an insurance, there's a cost of protection. It's like interest, but it's better than interest because it's actually buying protection for you if something happens to you before your policy is paid for it's going to pay it off so it's you know it's better than interest right that I mean you're actually getting something for the money that you're spending um but that what often came up when i would go out there is they said well i'm going to pay double for this in 10 years and i'd say you know what you're absolutely right that's if you make every single premium for the next 119 months you're going to pay double for this plan and sometimes they'll, they'll say you know well how do I avoid that? Or it, I say, well, you know, the only reason you would ever do that is if you didn't have the ability to pay this off early. And and I would even ask them, there have been many times where I started someone on a monthly pay because that's what they wanted. And after describing this, they said, well, we have the money to just pay this off. Can we just pay it off now? I'd say, absolutely. Because if you have the money to pay this in full, there's no reason for you to make 120 monthly payments. So a lot of times you find out that people do have the money but the kind of this, you needed to go through this process to figure out exactly how to do it. It's also important to understand that at any time during the life of the policy, they can pay it off early and pay less than if they make 120 premiums. So um, I'll let John or Steve explain the, the early payoff just real quickly. Real quick, Sherry yeah. asked on the chat bar, um, she said she would like to see one with the numbers. We do have that, Sherry. When we send out our follow-up email with the link, we'll send one that's filled out. Last yeah, perfect. And one other thing, Steve, I'll let you handle EPO. <clears throat> one other thing, when we when we go through this this um, exercise on the right hand side, and we get to the cost of protection of two thousand dollars, you can always say, you know, the, the only way to avoid that is if you can pay it all up front today. Most of us are not that fortunate. Um, it's much like your house payment, your car payment, or credit cards. If you're going to pay over time, you're going to pay a little bit more. But back to what Wes's point was, but for this little bit more that you're paying, you're also getting the protection right up front. Yeah. You don't get anything when you pay interest. The bank gets right. the protection and yeah. the guarantee combined. Yeah. That's a good yeah. point. You get the protection and the and and you're able to. to 
guarantee the prices. So. So, okay, we'll talk about early payoff here for a minute. Um, the early payoff process allows the first six months a person to convert a multi-pay plan to a single pay plan for no additional charge. So you have six months with, with within uh, which to well, subtract I'm all pre Hello? I'm still here. Okay, someone was talking. I didn't know if it was a question. All right, so first six months, anytime that they want to pay off early, they just subtract premiums from the original prearrangement amount and they pay the balance. And then they have a single pay policy. Uh, in the second six months, it's the same thing plus $150. If anybody uses um, the estimated payment worksheet, it's now on the rate calculators um that has it written across the bottom so it's pretty easy um anytime after a year <clears throat> the person can pay it off early and the way that we figure that is it's not fair to continue to pay the cost of protection once you've decided to pay it off early right anybody agree with that yeah we, we okay. agree with you steve so well, the way we factor it is when you when you calculate an initial premium part of that premium is the single pay rate part of that premium is the cost of insurance so for remaining number of months we strip the cost of insurance from what they're going to pay and they pay the remaining months out at the single pay rate the single pay rate is calculated by the initial face divided by total number of months. And what that does, that'll tell you how much of your premium is cost of insurance versus, versus the single pay rate. Does that make sense? Yes or no, not or shake. Let's keep yeah, going if you shake. Thumbs up, man. Okay. Um, so for example, if you had a $100 premium on a five-year plan, and say $70 of that was the single pay rate and they have 20 months to go, we would just charge them the 20 months at the $70, $70 rate rather than the $100 rate. So even uh, in the latter years of a 10 pay, you can still save thousands just by paying it off early because you could be, if you have three years to go on a 10 pay, that's three years of cost of insurance that you're saving if you pay it up early at that point. And if you run the numbers on a policy that you've done recently, you can kind of see how that plays out. And it's really good to do as an exercise because then you can have a better foundation from which you can explain it to people. You know, and I find, you know, the way West was talking about explaining people's options to them. I find that people respond a lot better if you don't it, it, it we don't care which option they pick we're just giving them all their options to choose from and giving them all the things that they need to consider when making that decision whatever they choose is fine you know but uh, we just have to give them all the information and and going through some of these examples on your own and understanding it a little better will help you to uh, be able to explain it to a person like you would explain it to your grandmother. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. And, and you guys, when, when the call's over with today, I'll I'll be sending an email out. Um, th this last thing John's going to go over, I'll send the PDF out of this. We'll send out the cost of protection worksheet and we'll fill one of them out for you. And then we'll also send out the, the early uh, payoff option brochure, the FAQs uh, on that as well. So just so you can familiarize yourself with um, the main topics that we've covered today. So, uh, as, and I'll send out the Child and Grandparent Protection FAQs as well. So, John, go ahead and. Uh... You guys, this is uh, our form on insurable interest. It's a great one to print out, especially in color, because on the left in green are the people who do have insurable interest. On the right in red are the ones that do not. Um, 
I've always kind of gone with the thing. It, it's um, a blood relative or marriage. That's kind of the easiest way for me to remember it. But people that have a relationship and can do and do have insurable interest would be on yourself, a parent or child, your current spouse, a child or parent, grandparents or grandchildren, siblings, nieces and nephews, aunts, uncles, domestic partner, and a trust. People that cannot um, purchase insurance on your behalf would be stepchildren or step parents, other relatives, so your in laws by marriage, cousins, great grandparents, and great grandchildren, former spouses, not sure when that would ever happen, um, representative payees, which is a common misnomer, nursing homes, group homes, care centers, and caregivers. Do you guys ever deal with rep pays? Uh, very rarely, Steve, but it obviously in that case, they'd have to be a power of attorney and that, and that covers it. So I'm assuming that's what John's covered next. So. John, we have yeah. a question at that bar. I'm just watching that. Carrie says, uh, wondering if it's changed. She said she had called homesteaders about three weeks ago and they said a niece does not have insurable interest. Sounds like maybe whoever she called was and uninformed Incorrect. yeah because yeah. it's right here in black and white i mean to help us to help you in the long run anytime you get information from customer service that you think is incorrect or is in, in conflict with something steve or i have told you write down the time and the date of the call that you made and, and if you can who you talk to homesteaders records all those incoming customer service calls and so we can spin that back and listen to it and use it as a training device for the um for the customer service rep so it's probably too late now and i forget aaron who you said um got that but um, pardon me she's in idaho carry me carry well. okay um but if you're anytime you call in, you want to have the folder for the person, try to make notes, time, date, who you talk to, especially if they say, you know, that disease is covered, they can answer no to the health questions, things like that. You want to make sure that you have a note there uh, to protect yourself. Can I ask a question about, that's come up from a few people about um, the trust? Uh, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> No, Fine, because uh, I know that we can't have, the, I mean, it has to be a, a, a person that's signing as applicant owner, isn't that correct? Yes. We've had yeah, people if you ask look, if trust can be listed as applicant owner, so if you want to just explain that. Well, if you look down second one from the bottom where it says trust, we require the certificate of trust and the section naming the trustees. So we require the documents much like we do in the, the case of a POA. Thanks. Anyone else have questions about this, about the insurable interest? And you guys, all these things that I've shown, you can pull off your market order system, which brings me to, um, this is my dashboard. Even I's dashboard looks a lot more complicated than yours does just because we have so many products and stuff. Please get in the habit, especially now. I mean, Homesteaders is adding and trying to make new things every single day to make your job easier, especially during this time. And check your My Reminders and Announcements there on the right because there's a lot of good information. As Steve mentioned earlier, he's got 140 and I about the same different funeral homes and who knows how many agents we have. It's really hard for us to get information out to everyone. So really watch your email and check your check your dashboard for any kind of updates or notices that, that we've sent out from the home office. Yeah, there's some great everybody. I'll back it up. They're, they've been releasing uh, a lot of great information, um, and and there's there's some things that are directly you could get information on. Some things you got to sign up for, but you know, I got uh, 
one on you know four four uh, group presentations that homesteaders has released uh they did one presentation last week with wanda the uh your uh my journey my decision or your journey your decision or something like that um and and, and i attended that but if you go on and you download those presentations they don't just have the presentation they give you a script they give you the presentation they give you the marketing material they give you the the survey they give you a checklist on how to put that um, group presentation together and and they've uh you know recently have have uh, released four new presentations there's also a brand new aftercare guide um as john mentioned a lot of the the marketing materials are now um free up to a certain quantity um there's a great aftercare guide that's a, it's a spiral bound book that's available to all funeral homes at no cost and um, that's available on the website as well i think you can get 50 of those so um, if you haven't been on here and, and looked at what's available to you at no cost, but there's lots of the benefits of pre-planning and, and different brochures that you could put up at your funeral home. Uh, the other side of that too, you guys, if there's something you really see and you like and it does cost you something and your funeral home doesn't want to pay for it, we'll pay for it and we'll send it to you. So how's that for an offer? Either home centers will pay for it or we'll pay for it. But the more stuff you have and you can put things up in your lobby, there's some awesome you know clear plexiglass brochure holders all kinds of stuff that you guys can have access to that if it's not free to you from homesteaders then we'd be more than happy to take care of those costs so and here's that that i just typed in aftercare up there you can get your aftercare checklist offline offline aftercare survey and then here's the new booklet and these are beautiful they're really nice. So you open it up. I think there's four different sections. There's the aftercare survey. Then you go into an aftercare checklist. And then you go into your more memorial guide. So that, that's a little pocket there on the right, if you can see that with the memorial guide stuck in. And all of that stuff comes with it, the checklist, all of it. And these are free. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to update any information to put in there, some people put lists of local grief services. Some people swap out the memorial guide for their own. Um, you know, customize it all you want once you get it. Um, the important thing is that the family gets it. Yeah. What a great, tool, especially right now, as we're reaching out to more and more aftercare families and just checking in with people to let them know we have, um, you know, this book available now to them. That's awesome, you guys. Thanks. It's really good. And one one last thing, unless you guys have something else that you want us to cover. Um, again, back to your dashboard. I can't stress how important it is, you know, on a daily, hopefully, or every couple days or a couple times a week, you go on and just read through all the information. We have a great university tab. There's all kinds of training modules and things like that. There's your anti-money laundering. There's, there's seven tutorials on online enrollment that you can watch. And all of this stuff is like two, three minutes long. None of them are super, super long. But there's a, a ton of information here. Um, on the sales side, look at number nine, reading your commission statement. Who's needed help with that before? <laughs> so um, just keep in mind, university is a great place. Libraries also got a lot of... Um, interesting information that slowly um once again yours will look different than mine because i've got everything in the sun under here but there's there's just a lot of agent training stuff code of conduct etc so there's white time. papers i see on the, the top white paper. they've got a brand new coronavirus resources that's pretty cool mm -hmm. you've seen yeah. that yet. that's awesome and that's also been appearing on the announcements and reminders or it did at yep. one time you you guys all of that stuff has been done in we, just the last few weeks i mean our home office people are busier than a one-armed paper hanger as my dad would say and they're 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 um, moving stuff out all the time to try to help you guys and make it easier um to, to still write your business that's outstanding yeah that's great you guys have a strong team behind you. Um, I mean, obviously you can see what, I mean, we've been trying to work hard, but you can see that 
homesteaders has unquestionably uh, pulled out all the stops and the resources. Something quite honestly, we, we could have gotten into, and we're just fire hosing you guys just about every day uh, with new information and, and new resources. So you know, take 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 that time in the mornings, uh, you know, or in the afternoons or evenings. You got a little bit of downtime, um, and just go through the website and just familiarize yourself with what's available. There's some really incredible tools here for you guys to be able to access. Um, I had forgotten that they had made a lot of their marketing stuff free at the beginning of the year. So you can get on there, see if there's things that, that you want. Um, I think there's even a way you can like order a sample kit first and like get a bunch, just like one of everything to see what kind of stuff you might want to have at the funeral home. So um, jump on. Most of those things are available in PDF so you can view them first anyways. And if you see things you like, go ahead and order some for your funeral home location and start to utilize some of those tools. These are great for, for all kinds of different things, going out and talking with churches, uh, going out and networking. Uh, there's a lot of things that these brochures and stuff can be used for, especially on the aftercare side. So John and Steve, you guys, thanks so much. Anything you want to wrap it up with? Well, I'll just show you real quick. The market mater marketing materials, you've got your fact brochures, which are basically agent-based. But right. if you click on brochures, those are all the brochures that, that we're offering. And once again, all these are free. And you can just, you can view it. You can read through the, read through the PDF of the brochure to see what you're getting. And then you can order 50 of them. That's great. Awesome. And to make um, it easier, booklet is the one that you want. Yeah, there, there's a ton of them. Make it easier because we care is another good one. We've got them in Spanish, almost everything. Um, non you'd want to stay away from the non-guaranteed stuff. I know some of, some of the people yeah, might have downloaded that, that PDF and just emailed that um, to some of their families as well. They haven't even sent the, the actual pamphlet. They just sent the PDF. Yeah. And have them know that it's a trifold thing, but it's still readable. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, and some of these are are published in African American with photos, etc. Um, I'm not sure why they're on here, but if you wanted something for the African American community, you can always call customer service and and they can send them to you. Absolutely. All right, you guys. Hope everybody got something and gleaned something uh, productive off of the call today. Thanks everybody for being on. Uh, looks like you kept their interest for the most part. We only lost four through the call, so good job, you guys. I that might, think that might be a record. <laughs> um, and uh, again, thanks. It's Tuesday. Keep doing what you're doing. Do, do your check-in calls. Reminder on the uh, 50 conversations a day to put your name in for a $50 gift card drawing each week. Uh, we all. Sorry, real quick. Nicholas is asking if there's a t like a card, a policy card that they can carry in their wallet or so showing they have a homesteader's policy. Um, some people, uh, if they're funeral homes, create them locally. Um, the emergency information card is one of those things that you can get through the marketing department. Um, uh, Aaron Westraz, I think you guys are familiar with that. Um, I've also got a template that you can use if you've got a um, if you've got a laminator and you want to just make your own. Uh, let me know if you want that. Oh, great! Nicholas is wondering how I can get the template. It sounds like it's on the website, Steve. No, I made it up. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, why don't you send that to West, and we'll, West will send that out to you, Nicholas, and everyone that template. Okay. Uh, do you want me to logo it for your funeral homes, or do you want me to just leave it generic? Leave it generic. We can logo it up for them. Okay. Yeah, that works great. So, Lou said, good presentation today, guys. So, nice work. Um, all right, everybody. Have an awesome rest of your day. Let's have a great week. Keep your conversations up. Get over 40 points on your productivity sheets. We'll... Uh, We'll get you a uh, Brian Tracy eat that frog book. So uh, we appreciate all of you and grateful to have you on the call today. And a big uh, extends of gratitude to Steve and John for joining us. Well, you're, you're thank you. Thank you. Anytime we're here every day at the same time, you guys join the party. Yeah. You're welcome. We're not <laughs>
<laughs> every day we had one at one o'clock uh, Pacific. So we just oh, ran into what would have been ours if Greg didn't uh, take the day off. Ah, well, you're only four minutes late to that one, so you're good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a good day. Everybody stay safe. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.